Welcome to Fortune Cookies Tarot. And this is the 31 Days of Tarot. We are up to day 30. There's just one more day left. Um, today's theme is thoughts on tarot becoming mainstream. So I did pull out the double major tarot because we're going to do a look at like American culture. I'm going to stick it with uh, stick to just American culture and how people are viewing um, tarot specifically, but esoterra um, in general. So uh, we'll have some fun with this. I mean, my my thoughts on people becoming more open to tarot um, and becoming more interested in tarot, I think it's kind of neat. Uh, like I said, when Shelly and I started doing readings online, I guess um, it was the beginning of 2020 when we, we put together our website and the Facebook group, um, the people that approached us and were getting readings initially were all people that had never had a tarot reading before. Uh, it, it was really kind of remarkable. These were people that were just like, yeah, I want to give it a shot. Um, a lot of them have become repeat customers. Um, they do like it. They'll send me an email real quick and say, hey, what do I do? Um, you know, we absolutely can do like real quick, like three card readings, those sorts of things. Um, when I did the lives over New Year's, we had a lot of people that just kind of popped in and, uh, you know, first timers getting interested in the Facebook group. I can't believe how many different readers there are on uh, YouTube that are reading celebrity tarot and political tarot and... All, all sorts of things like it really is a very very neat um resurgence of this and i hope it stays because i do think that this is fun and helpful uh you know you can't always get the correct answers when you sit there and agonize and think and think and think sometimes you need someone to pull that hangman card and give you a different perspective so um so let's see how american culture is changing in their attitude toward tarot and i'm using the double major tarot because this does show me a really good progression of attitudes and beliefs and um you know it's really a, a great deck if someone's going through like a major major life change uh, marriage divorce uh you know loss loss by death anything like that um, career change, work change, coming out of a narcissistic relationship, getting into a narcissistic relationship, existing in a narcissistic relationship. Um, you know, it really can give you a nice perspective of um, how you're developing or, or how maybe things are affecting you negatively. So um, let's see how Tara was affecting American culture. We're going to look at American culture first. So oh, this is an interesting spread, and I'm sorry, I'm kind of leaning it toward myself. I should be leaning it toward you all. So interesting little spread we have here for progression. So um, the strength card is all about taming the beast and keeping things under control, keeping things rational and well behaved. And then we have the Knight of Wands who comes in with some new ideas and implements those new ideas and new passions and, uh, you know, maybe is sometimes an out of the box thinker. The The Page of Wands is a very out of the box thinker. He comes up with some really, really neat ideas, kind of like an Elon Musk, an innovator, that sort of thing. And so the Knight of Wands is implementing those out of the box ideas and, and, and bringing them to the forefront and putting them into place. The High Priestess, and this is the second card for the High Priestess in the double major deck. This isn't the traditional. And what she's doing, the High Priestess is our secret keeper. She holds the Torah in the original deck, in the original depiction. And she is the gatekeeper of the esoteric knowledge. In this card, 
she's opening the curtain to that esoteric knowledge. Now we move on into the Page of Swords, who is being ambushed, (laughs) Um, perhaps not utilizing the information and that the intellect, that esoteric intellect, very, very well. Maybe um, there's some disruption there, uh, some friction, let's put it that way. But ultimately, that information is wielded well, and managed well, and handled well. And the, uh, the uh, ideas are presented in a more consumable fashion, let's put it that way. So there we have that. Now, just for fun, let's take a look at I got a lot of Australians and uh, New Zealanders that follow my channel so let's see how Australia and New Zealand are doing with this great awakening of psychic information and tarot let's see how those countries are responding So, and again, this is like a in general kind of uh, vibe for the cultures in, in, in New Zealand and Australia. So uh, they're, they're a bit out of control right now. So once upon a time, very, very open to the idea, but currently not seeing its value. They, they have more practical things that they need to deal with right now. Um, and the, the idea of esoterra was, was, was more, um, acceptable. Uh, they're, they're working on more concrete things, but eventually they will see things from a different perspective and become more in tune with that. It will become more mainstream, uh, but it, it 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 will still be like an undercover uh, fun thing. It's not it, it, you know there's there's still going to be some jokes about it, and I can hear a Kiwi and Australian accent going ah that stuff you know. Um, so yeah you know not not super super uh, change to the perspective. Now how about the Great United Kingdom? see how the United Kingdom is feeling about the development of tarot becoming more more prominent, more more mainstream. I'm doing the United Kingdom as a whole. United Kingdom as a whole. I know we have a lot of cultures in there, but. So we have Talents that are hidden, um, but very well cherished. Talents that are well respected, um, but losing sight of how valuable they are. Again, bigger fish to fry right now. Um, the the progress of this as a uh, super prominent, uh, well, high, highly and well widely regarded um addition to culture is is still a little off but we're gonna get there we're gonna get there and the surprising thing is that i think in the future we will see um, a much more balanced kind of view toward tarot and esoterra um i just think that 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 is something that we're going to see um i know that there are members of the royal family that have uh talked with uh, astrologers and psychics and those sorts of things so um i think i think we're going to get into um a period where 
it it does take a much larger stage in England. So there we go. So that is what I think about the tarot becoming much more mainstream. So um, comment down below what you think about tarot becoming more mainstream. Um, you know, I, I, I am quite heavily tattooed and I've been heavily tattooed for a long time. And when people started getting, uh, you know, when regular everyday people started getting tattooed, I kind of was like, oh, you know, like I, I was kind of unusual before. Now I want to remove all of them. I can't because I have way too many. Um, but I, I don't think I'll ever feel that way about tarot. You know, uh, I think like hairdressers, like interior design people, like chefs, everyone's going to have their preference for the way someone reads. Uh, when I read online, I do try and read with a very positive spin. Um, even if I'm reading for some negative terrible people I do try to have somewhat of a positive spin on it and offer some constructive information in my readings it's really what I do in my private readings as well um, you know again we don't tell the future and I think that that is one of the things that people will need to understand as tarot becomes more mainstream um, we're, we're not you know, we're not going to tell you what's going to happen 10 years from now. No one is a Nostradamus. Nostradamus was Nostradamus. That was about it. Um, you know, you can lump Edgar Casey into that group too. But, um, you know, tarot readers, we, we are more of spiritual advisors, psychic advisors, and we can read the energy that's going on. We can get, um, images and, 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 and a glimpse into the motivations of others that are around you, but we can't say, um, you know, this individual is going to do this. We, this individual is going to react to you in this fashion. So, um, you know, free will always plays a really big part. Uh, sometimes with non-believers, that gets a little bit tricky. They don't quite understand how um, the tarot works and, and how we are, you know, working with the energy that's at hand and that, you know, the readings that we do for you um, can change the course of things. You can change the course of things by um, making some different decisions or um, asking some different questions maybe of the people that you're involving yourself with. So, um, so there it is. I hope you enjoyed this. Please like, share, and subscribe. Tomorrow is our last day of the 31 Days of Tarot. So um, if you like this and you want me to do it again next year, please let me know. I, I had a lot of fun doing it. Um, I did do my videos in advance. So, you know, it was uh, it was a fun, uh, fun few days that I, I could do all my production. So um, have a great day. Talk to you soon.